Welcome viewers, thanks for tuning in and welcome to today's review. Today's video features an exciting new Intel Mini PC, and a recent development in the Android x86 community. This is the Kotlix GK45, and it's a powerful mini desk computer running up to 2.5 GHz and it has some great features. Today's video is a bit long, featuring both the Windows operating system and my pet project of Android x86, as my quest to create the ultimate super Android TV box running on powerful Intel and AMD hardware continues. Up next, I have a full review with benchmark scores and live demonstrations. Stay tuned, that's after the break. So I'm back and thanks for staying with us. So this is how the GK45 is packed and shipped. It's a durable box, so the product is well protected during shipping. And to the back you have some specifications. The CPU is the quad-core Intel Celeron J4105 processor, running up to 2.5 GHz. The GPU is the Intel UHD graphics running up to 750 MHz. It has 4 GB of 2133 LPDDR4 RAM and 64 GB of onboard eMMC storage. It has expandable storage via SATA SSD up to 2 TB and M2 SSD up to 1 TB. It comes with dual band 5 GHz Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. It comes with an array of input output peripherals, which I will display in a moment, and the PC is powered by a 12 volts power adapter. And without further ado, I will do a quick unboxing. This is what's in your purchase. You have the Kotlix GK45 computer itself. You get one HDMI cable, one display port cable, a 12 volts 3 amps DC power adapter, four spare rubber legs, and a mounting bracket and screws. And the last item here is a user's operation guide. And now a close-up look at its design and its input-output peripherals. The body is made of plastic with a glossy surface, and the Kotlix logo printed to the top. To the rear, you have one HDMI port, one mini display port, you have dual gigabit Ethernet LAN ports at 1000 megabits per second, a USB Type-C port, and the DC power adapter input. To one side, you have a headphone jack, a micro SD card reader, and some intake cooling vents. To the other side, you have the exhaust vents. To the front, you have three USB ports, one of which is a USB power port. This port is for powering devices even if the PC is off. You have an LED power button, a reset pinhole button, and a built-in microphone. And below the PC, you have some intake vents, two cutout holes for mounting the included bracket, and two screws for opening the bottom cover to access the RAM, the M2 storage drive, and the SATA expansion bay. This is what the inside looks like. Here you can see the M2 internal SSD slot, and the SATA SSD cable. And this is what the top side looks like when you pop open the top cover. I will now set this up on my 4K TV that I will be using as a monitor for this review. So I'm connected, and ready to go. And as I start up for the first time, I will have to complete a quick setup wizard only once. Once completed, I will be taken to the Windows desktop screen. So here we are at Windows System Information, and it is showing us that the CPU is running at 1.5 GHz and this is the base speed. The system is a 64-bit operating system running on 4 GB of RAM, and below here it shows that Windows is activated. To get into some more details, the System and Hardware Information app shows the PC is running on Windows 10 Pro operating system and that it has DirectX version 12 support. The CPU and RAM information in this section show the CPU is a quad-core Intel Celeron J4105 with a speed of 1.5 GHz, and this is its base speed. You have 4 GB of RAM, from which this is the remainder. The GPU is the Tricore Intel HD Graphics 600, and the audio adapter is the Realtek ALC269. 
Under storage, you can see the 64GB system disk from which this is the remainder after the Windows installation. Under network it shows that you have dual band AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. And that's a brief overview of its system and hardware information. Next, I have the scores from the various benchmarks performed on TV boxes and mini PCs in my videos, but the scores in this video doesn't include the Antutu benchmark for Windows, as it's no longer available on the Microsoft Store. You will however get the Antutu score in the Android Dual Boot segment in a moment. So these are the results of the various tests under the Windows 10 operating system. First the results of the Novabench RAM copy speed, and the internal storage disk read and write speeds under Windows. The GK45 has a RAM copy speed of 5,820 megabytes per second. The internal system disk achieved a read speed of 247 megabytes per second, and a 226 write speed. These are average scores for this system, but they're not as high as those carrying the Intel Core CPUs. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi speed test. The results show the 5 GHz and the LAN port hitting the maximum speed of 100 megabits per second. The 2.4 could only manage around 51 megabits per second. The 2.4 Wi-Fi band delivers 54% less bandwidth than the 5 GHz, and I recommend using the 5 GHz and the LAN port for maximum bandwidth speed. The results of the new Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark shows that the Intel Celeron J4105 scored 1,321 single-core, and 404 multi-core. The score here is another average score compared to Intel Core CPUs. The final benchmark is the Ice Storm Extreme and the CloudGate GPU benchmark part of the TreatyMark Gamers Bench Windows version. In this test, the Intel HD600 got an Ice Storm Extreme score of 13,259, and 3,054 in the CloudGate test. These are okay, but they are half of what you would get on the Intel Core models. So that's it for the benchmarks, and let's see how we can use the GK45 for standard use and for entertainment purposes. For standard use, the GK45 is a full-fledged licensed activated Windows computer, so all the basic functions like Microsoft Office, browsing the web, checking your emails, connecting a webcam and using social media, basic photo editing, playing music, installing preferred antivirus programs, multitasking, and playing games are all available. To get deeper into its entertainment features, you can install the Netflix app from the Microsoft Store or open the Chrome browser and watch Netflix movies in HD quality, without worries about DRM support that you have to face on Android operating system. Simply connect it to an HDMI port on your favorite television, and enjoy Netflix in the highest quality. However, it will require the use of an air mouse, but that's a no-brainer. Another entertainment and informative function of this mini PC is the use of YouTube. Open the Chrome browser and watch YouTube videos in as high as 8K quality, but it plays best at 4K resolution despite having high bandwidth speed. The main interest of many viewers is knowing how it plays 4K videos at 60 frames per second. So I will play my list of 4K videos on the default Windows player with codec packs installed.
and only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points the mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee So some of the samples played fairly okay, while some had playback issues. You don't have HDR display or Dolby Vision in Windows mode. So for today's Windows gaming segment, I would like to show something really exciting. Have you ever wanted to play Battle Royale games on your computer, and would like to harness the power of your GPU and control the game with precision aiming and movements using a standard mouse and keyboard? Then I would like to introduce you to GameLoop. Many of you may have already seen Game Loop if you're an Android gamer, but for those who have never seen it, you're in for a treat. Game Loop is a new Android emulator specially developed for first-person shooter and battle royale games. It features the Google Play Store and an advanced keymapping feature better than those used on Android. You can log in using your Google account, and in some game that uses Facebook, you can use your Facebook account to access saved games. The better the PC, the better the emulator harnesses the power of the CPU and GPU. Imagine running this on a gaming rig. I have already installed Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG, and I will do a demonstration.
lost the lead. So the GK45 is not the best mini PC for gaming but it does okay. And with a base clock speed of just 1.5 GHz, this makes it even more difficult to render high graphics games. However, the Game Loop app still managed to play in medium graphics settings which the app does automatically. Going forward I will be using Game Loop to benchmark mini PCs in the future, and I would like to encourage you to give Game Loop a try. See the link in the description area. So this brings to an end the Windows operating system segment. And now I move on to the new exciting development I mentioned earlier, which is the release of the first installment of Android QX86, or Android 10 as it is also called. Please note, this is only the first beta release and it's by no means perfect, as Android x86 is always a work in progress to fix bugs in the system. Nonetheless, I am quite excited to test it for the first time. The Codelix GK45 comes with three expandable storage options. Two M2 slots up to 1TB maximum capacity, and one SATA SSD expansion bay up to 2TB. For this demonstration I will use the SATA cable with my 500GB SSD, and install the new Android x86 as a standalone operating system, completely independent of the Windows operating system, but uses all the hardware resources the PC provides. Please note. The manufacturers used a glue gun to secure the SATA cable to the bracket, so trying to remove it can result in damaging the head of the cable. So apply a blow dryer or a pry tool to get below the glue without damaging the cable. For a tutorial on how to install Android x86, see the link in the description area. So this is the startup of the new Blissrom Android 10x86, and you're greeted by this stunning ring of lightning animation for a couple of seconds, then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the new Android 10 operating system and launcher, and I've already tested most of its new features and would have loved to do a quick review and benchmarks for you today. But unfortunately I have to postpone this segment as I encountered numerous bugs in the system, so much that it would just be a waste of time at this point. What I can tell you is the operating system is very fast and they have made some improvements making it easier and more efficient. Some of the issues include. No audio via the HDMI port. No root access or root switch in the developer's options. Netflix YouTube Antutu and Treaty Mark Gamers Bench does not work. 4K playback is bad. And I got a couple of other bugs relating to running and installing of apps. But don't worry. As there's been another new release from the developers of the Android x86 project which is the new Android 9 Pi RC 1x86. So I will install this new operating system and continue. So I'm back. 
and this is the new official Android 9x86 operating system from the developers over at AndroidX86.org. This firmware did a little better than the one I just tried a while ago, but it isn't without its own challenges. I've already tested it and these are my findings. Well for starters it's rooted, and there is a root switch in the developer options. You don't get any Google Wide Vine support so Netflix is out of the question. Amazon Prime Video installs but it's useless because the hardware is incompatible. You can install alternative launchers. I installed the ADW Launcher 2 and it works okay. Screen rotation works. Under system and hardware information, the CPU is clocked at 2.5 GHz by default and you have 64-bit ABIs. These are the results of the various benchmark tests. You have YouTube but only up to 1080p quality. Only 1080p videos play OK and 4K videos freeze up every time. I couldn't get any games going on the Intel HD Graphics 600 GPU, as the hardware was incompatible and games kept on crashing. So in summary, the Codelix GK45 is a good mini PC that you can use in your home or office, for work or entertainment. Connect it to a monitor and use it as a regular PC, or connect to a projector and play Netflix or games with friends and family. The Codelix GK45 has multiple storage options, allowing you to install up to three additional drives up to 4 terabytes in total. This gives you the option to install a separate operating system, totally independent from Windows which runs on the internal system disk, allowing this device to have far-reaching applications. My new Android 10x86 trial run had some issues on this hardware, but this doesn't mean that other operating systems like Ubuntu wouldn't work perfectly. I noticed that under Android the CPU clock speed maxed out at 2.5 GHz and not 1.5 which is the base speed under Windows. You have three output display options that I didn't show in this video due to time, but in later videos I will show how to achieve this. So I have come to the end of my review. The developer of Minisforum and Codelix would like to announce that the GK45 has an auto power on feature but it needs the user to update the EC. So a link to that can be found in the description area. Also, Minisforum in collaboration with TV Box Stop would like to extend a special Black Friday 20% discount to any viewer who watched this video and decided they would like to purchase. This offer applies to both the 64 and the 128GB model. So using the special affiliate links in the description area, select your desired model and add to your cart, then contact Minisforum via the contact link and state your claim.
Thanks for watching. Remember to like this video, share it with friends on the Android x86 community. Be sure to check out the new game loop Android emulator and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell for more of these videos and see you in the next one.